Welcome to the Bridge Nine Podcast, episode number 10. I'm Tyler. I'm Brian. I'm Ryan. Wow, you guys did it. We're growing up. Woo! But um, yeah, number 10. We're already we're already there. Double digits. But yeah, so real quick, short, serve them up the, the news. Give them the, the business. News. Well, we got War on Women self-titled full-length pre-orders today. Uh, that'll be out February 10th. Uh, we've also got a track stream of Servilia up on allpress.com at some point today. That's the first track off the new album. Yep. First yep. track. Yep. First track on the album. Uh, their first new music, really, since the, the 2012 Improvised Weapons EP. So check it out. It rips. It's cool. Yep. I think B9store.com. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it now. But I think that's the only uh, pre-order we have right now, really. I mean, there's the Boy Sets Fire, but that's kind of... Uh, not, buy, re- not really it. a pre-order, yeah. If you buy it now, we'll ship it to you. And yeah, other than that, we got Mystery Box 3 is the only one left. So yeah. scoop Last that up chance. while you can. While you still can. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's get right to it. Uh, let's talk about kind of a, a big weird week last week being Christmas. So how was everyone's Christmas? Schultz, how was your Christmas? How was your Christmas, Schultz? What did it you was, do? It was mostly pretty good. What does you know? mostly pretty good mean? Well... Went to Foxwoods, as you know. Mm-hmm. Met up with my friend Jay. The one whose uh, weed you smoke. What? The one whose weed you smoke. And whose couch you abuse. <laughs> Can we not talk about me smoking weed on something our bosses listen to? We've mentioned you smoking <laughs> weed like three Christ. times already. <laughs> you have the worst okay. memory. All right, come on, weed No, man. I... Weed, weed boy, man, weed, weed boy, man. let's go. Right, Stay on track. Man. Hey, 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 hey remember where you are. You let's forgot go. where you are. We're in the podcast. Oh, yeah, I'm so high right now. Fuck. So you're smoking weed all weekend with your friend. <laughs> Clearly. At Fox Woods with all the old women. Uh, yeah, women were in, in us. What? Rather, with what? us. What? In us? <laughs> <laughs> Tripping what over my words about? here. Jeez. Are you high right now? Yes. You are, aren't you? You caught me. Um, Did you smoke DDTs? DDTs? Yep. <laughs> That's a wrestling move. <laughs> <laughs> what is DD? What are DDTs? He said he wants to take <laughs> DDTs to see God. <laughs> what? That's what what even said. is that? He means DMT. What is DDT? DDT is a fucking wrestling move right, well, that Razor Ramon did. What's what's DMT? Uh, I forgot, but it's like a you weird... You said you wanted to do it. I said like I said this years ago. You said you wanted to fly and see God. <laughs> <laughs> I've kind of lost Yahweh. interest in it, but it is supposed to be like a crazy, eye-opening, life-changing experience eye-opening. to take DMT. And it's kind of hard to acquire or make on your own, so I'm not putting too much effort into it. You should do that crocodile drug that makes your skin fall off. Oh, God. <laughs> but if I got you DDTs, you would do it? <laughs> Please don't give me a DDT. I'll probably break a leg. If he got you this drug that makes you see now, the Yahweh drug, would you use it? Would you see God? Maybe, yeah. I would hope you would join me, though. I'm not going to join you. Why would I join you? Because you want to see God. and You don't need a friend to your see mind. God. You see all these weird colors and shapes and little alien men. Aliens? Well, I don't want to see that. <laughs> That's frightening. Uh, regardless. Wow, so you're way off topic. Very <laughs> you're quickly. at Foxwoods tripping balls on weed. Clearly. Yep. That's what you do, apparently. We gambled. I lost some money. It happens. Money what do you do? This? Do you just do the slots? I just play video slots, basically. That's yeah. it? What's you have no skills. Isn't that what, like, old, decrepit women play? Yes. They roll yeah. up in their electronic wheelchairs, park themselves Smoke for hours. They actually did six. completely just remove one of the, like, the chair stools from a Wheel of Fortune slot so that this woman in a rascal could sit there for, like, a couple <laughs> hours playing. It's pretty tight. Yeah. So you go to a fucking casino and you just play the slot machines? Yeah, I... The first time I went, I was pretty good at it and won the $180 instead of losing it. And uh, the thing is, they're cheaper to play, too, than most of the table games. Table games, you have to have a minimum bet, usually like $10. Well, so, so you can see it's more fun, though. But you can wipe out a lot of money very quickly, and it's kind of scary. But that's how you make the big bucks. That's living on the edge. Or how you lose the big bucks. That's living on the edge. That's experiencing that's, that's life. Part of, that's part Ooh. of gambling, man. No, I'd rather just do the penny slots and do like... Penny money. slots. Well, you do... You bet like 125 of those at, at, at a time. So it's 25 pennies? Because it's only $1.25 at that point. But if you hit something, then that's great, and you can win a decent amount of money off yeah. that, actually. Did you meet anybody? Any girls? No. Any friends at all? Anybody? No, I don't, I don't really get sociable in those situations. There weren't a lot of peers there around Christmas anyway. What was it, mostly? Old women, men, couples. Men, of, couples? Of the older persuasion. How much money did you lose? 180 How do you feel about that? It happens. 
Jay covers the hotel room, so it's it's a nice gesture. I feel you, like you we, said like fuck a lot. I feel yeah. like you did that a lot. You were swearing right? a lot at your little slot machine. You love doing that. I don't you know. can't remember it's, how how many hours were you parked there? Parked at the, like slot, at the machine. slot machine. Oh, I, I kind of go you from, hop around, right? Yeah, I pop around a lot. Yeah, yeah. We should go there sometime together. You if you I, genuinely want to go and gamble, go. we could do that. I get excited because I'm like, all right, there's a chance I can win money. I've been there before. Oh, okay. And then I start losing, and it makes you lose your mind and want to kill yourself. <laughs> I don't freak out about it too much. We why saw a couple you, movies. That why did you good. lose so much? Well, I was only down seventy two at one point, and I thought, oh, maybe I can make that uh, seventy two bucks back. And instead, I lost another hundred. You missed that. Was, money? I was down two hundred at one point. You missed two hundred. And then I worked my way back up to being only down. How 72. do you lose it all? Do you ha- do you technically lose it? Or could you just like run out of the casino? What? No, you you have to put the money in before you before you. Yeah, you're using. Do like you cash. literally put pennies in? No, 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 no. no you, you have to put like I think at least you're using cash or like a voucher. With yeah, a I think you it. actually you have to get a voucher. I think yeah. actually, or do you put cash in? I can't remember. You can put cash or vouchers in, but you can only take vouchers out. Yeah. Did you do the voucher or cash? Uh, usually, like, got my first voucher well, put, and then yeah. just, like, use that. Yeah, you put cash in and then you unless get the I, voucher back. Unless I got cleaned out of the voucher and then I would have to put more cash in or what yeah. have you. Yeah. What did you What did you eat while you were there? Anything good? Uh, California Pizza Kitchen. Cheeseless got, Pizza? Yeah, Cheeseless Pizza, like the wild mushroom one. Oh, yeah. Um, and their white corn guacamole and chips. Oh, yeah. It was decent. Uh, I got sushi. That was real good. Oh, yeah. I had a sweet potato and avocado maki. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had that this weekend, too. Did you? From where? Uh, I don't know. Some fucking place. Some fucking place. (laughs) I'll have to check that out. (laughs) Traditional Chinese restaurant. Yeah, I think it's in downtown Somerville. Some fucking place. (laughs) Pretty good. How was yours Christmas? Is Wait, you're, we're not done with you. That's pretty much my whole Christmas. We're right talking there, about man. the whole break. The whole break. The whole break. What did you do besides, after you got back from Foxwoods? Uh, I had a relaxing Saturday. I just stayed in since... I was, oh, well, well, we went you to... chilled the, with us. Yeah, I chilled with you guys. We did the... We went uh, to a trampoline. Jumping around. Indoor park. park. Yeah. Hung out with a bunch of 17-year-old bros. Shelt, very true. Sheltz played an intense game of dodgeball with you. A bunch Three of games bros. of dodgeball. You Three start. Games. We played one with your friends, which makes sense. It's like okay, this is fun. With your friends. Then we decided to leave, and you played two more without any yes. anyone you knew. Just a bunch of sixteen. And Sometimes 17 you just got to mingle with, with, with you know, children. Ten, ten years younger than you. you just want to hang out with the Who young are kids. Also, t- ten years younger and ten inches taller. Yeah, you were the shortest kid there. I don't know about that. The you shortest got, and the oldest. Person. I was among the short. <laughs> you got beat up by seventeen year old. The funny old man. Playing with they the whipped a ball at your head. Yeah, and you cried, and then you tried hitting on all no. the moms. They no. hit your dent, and it got more dented. Yeah. No, I caught I caught one of the throws at one point. You caught one. Honestly, I think I trapped it a little bit, but yeah. ref ref thought otherwise, so I took it. The ref. <laughs> <laughs> the trampoline park. <laughs> Employee, yes, the ref. Ref. You were... Saturday, not much. Wait, what were you going to say? You met, a, you met a girl Friday, correct? No, I didn't. <laughs> kind of. No. Instagram, right? Online. Oh, Online yeah. girl. You met a girl online. Let's, uh, yeah. let's talk about her a little bit. Amanda from Richmond start following me on Instagram and shouting me out to get my attention until we became friends. What are some of the things she has said? Has said? What does she call you? She seems into me to some degree. What does she call you? Master Bay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. her, her first text to me was, yes, Master. I'm not sure, really sure where it came from. It's not even really a blatantly sexual thing somehow. I don't know. It's like a weird funny joke i guess is it a funny joke or is I, it just weird master <laughs> i don't know i truly do not know what to tell you why don't you ask you didn't ask for an explanation when that's the first thing she said to you no i just kind of rolled with you it just rolled with it you, you kind of liked it didn't you i don't know me and you have such a ridiculous sarcastic friendship where well, we've known each other for years but is that that's not the first thing but it developed. Said to you yeah i didn't say what's up master <laughs> yeah it developed pretty quickly you did say i am your master very early on. <laughs> How, I find that hard to believe. Well, I think you were quoting East Mountain Down, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. Regardless, um, I don't know. So we already have like the funny, sarcastic uh, friendship going where we say a bunch of strange things to each other, I guess. Like what are the strange things? Other strange things. I don't know. I can't think of anything specific. She's turned on by your, your uh, Jewishness. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Explain. Explain? Yeah, she just she's just into Jewish guys. 
Like, like what? What does she say? She says they're intelligent and economical, so <laughs> <laughs> I fit the bill, I guess. Does she know you're only half, though? No, yeah, she doesn't, but she I don't think she would mind. Half Jew. I don't think she would mind. She said, convert me, master. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I was like, what am I going to convert you to? I'm not even really Jewish myself. I don't do anything. What did she say? She's like, it's okay. Convert me. That's weird. It sounds, it sounds kind of sexual. It does. It could be, yeah. Strange innuendo. I, I, I don't know. What's going to go she's, on with this? Just, she's from Virginia, think, right? <laughs> that is, I checked. It's like a nine-hour drive. That's not that bad. It's, that's a long... That's a weekend. Take a, take a day. A, get up early, take a day, drive down there, get there almost, in the late afternoon. It's almost a day of worth of driving back and forth. That barely gives me any actual weekend time to hang out with her. Oh, take a long weekend. Yeah, take a long weekend. Could. Some time Maybe. off. She calls you master. I don't know. She could come up here, too. You always say that. She likes adventures. Do you? I thought you were adventurous. You, you were just know. telling us you were yesterday. You yeah, bought a blender this weekend. I'm not adventurous yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We asked how you were adventurous yesterday, and you said, I bought a blender. Because <laughs> I thought it would be funny. <laughs> no, no, you, you did didn't. not. You were being yeah, dead serious. You, you were, did I'm not think it was serious. funny. So, come on. you got to stop using this. I think no one thinks you're funny. Obviously. We all know you're not funny. All right. Then it wasn't funny, but it was me trying to be funny. But it wasn't. And it's true. What's well, true? You did buy a blender. It is true. How are you adventurous then? Oh, I'm not really adventurous. You said you were. You bought when a blender. Did I say this yesterday. yesterday. Man, yeah. your memory is shot. I was reading that, that. Yeah, I'm adventurous. I bought a blender. Yeah, what part of that statement sounds totally sincere? It's the way you said it yesterday. Yesterday, you were totally. Oh, no. You're the worst, like liar or like yeah. uh, put on her, and you. Uh, I think any reasonable human being could see that and go, "Come on, oh, that's like a funny joke." Come on. Let's get there's real. No, there's man. no coming on. I'm being as real as real can be. So you're not adventurous. Correct. Okay. Do you would you like to be? No. Why not? Seems forced. What does? I don't know. Anyone being adventurous? No, not necessarily. Just I'm you? open to things, but I just I just won't. What are you them. open to? Doing things. Like what? Like anything. I'll go bungee jumping. You mean like anything. You're like gonna what? go bungee jumping? I would, no, you wouldn't. I would do it. Let's do it. Let's go up on the roof. Uh, I mean, like, pay an organization Let's tie a rope to, to you do and throw you off. Why the would you pay an organization? DIY bunch of we could just that throw sounds, you off the roof. I know. So commit suicide without saying you're so? not going to die. Oh we got God. the rope. You should let it wrap you up in bubble wrap and throw yeah, you off the roof. Throw you off the roof. Throw you into the dumpster. That'd be a good video. <laughs> that would be sick. That'd be kind of funny, honestly. Would you let us do that? I'll consider it. Be adventurous. You, let us roll you in bubble wrap and throw you off the roof into. A you should dumpster. let us put you in the dumpster in bubble wrap and then roll the dumpster off the roof. Yeah. How are you going to get the dumpster on the roof? We'll get it up there. When it, it's not that heavy. We'll just put you in the recycling dumpster. Yeah, yeah. Wheel it off. How are you going to get the recycling dumpster on the roof? <laughs> it's already... Uh, well, fine. We'll just push it off the third floor. Fine. Well, they, isn't there... I think down near Liberated, they have that those two doors that open. Yeah, we'll, just push, we'll it just, it right just push it right out. We'll push it out of there. Oh, all right. <laughs> what? You're in the bubble wrap. You're in the dumpster. We've just pushed you out. You're fine. It's a Sounds good like video. A idea. So are we done with my Christmas break here? Well, what else? So. Are we? Have you used the blender yet? Yes. What have you blended? I made cashew cream. Ketchup cream? <laughs> cashew cream. Oh, how's that? Have you used it for anything? Yeah, I used it for the penny la vodka. It was good? Yeah. How do you make ketchup cream? I did not make ketchup cream, Ryan. What did you make? Tyler misheard me. What did you say? Did you just zone out for the last 20 seconds? What? So you made ketchup cream. You made cream. ketchup cream. Isn't you ketchup, just fucking said it. Ketchup is already liquidy. I don't, why How do you, do you need the blender at all? I'm just going to shut down and go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's what you did? Nothing else? I went to Trader Joe's and food shopped. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was the highlight of that trip? <laughs> the highlight of Trader Joe's? Yeah. I know you get Maybe so when I was... giddy going to Trader Joe's. <laughs> oh, there was a huge dog outside TJ Maxx. That was pretty cool. Why were you at TJ Maxx? Seeing if they had blenders. At TJ Maxx? Why would you go there? Because well, they, they have kitchen equipment. Sometimes they, didn't. they do. They didn't, right? They didn't. So I just went to a True Value, picked it up there. So this blender, what, 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 why'd you get the blender bug? Why'd you get this in your mind all of a sudden? We didn't have one in the house as far as I could tell. He wanted to make sauces. Sauce? Yeah. And at least sauce? now I have a blender, so it's never an issue if I want to make something that requires it. True. Well, there you go. That is pretty adventurous. Yeah. So what are you Pretty what are you doing for New Year's? Wait, wait, we didn't finish your <laughs> Christmas break. How was yours? What are you doing for New Year's? 
Tyler, how was your Christmas break? My What'd Christmas you do? break was pretty good. I didn't do anything. Did you exchange presents? No. Oh, really? No. Oh. He's lying. What'd you do, Ryan? You know, I chilled. With family. Chilled with family, with friends. Smoked. Hung you know, out with some friends. Hung out with some friends. Some other friends. Some other friends. Went, you know. Went, it, went dot, 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 you know. Okay. You know, I just, yeah. I just enjoyed my. You just go. Uh, Your time off. My, my time off. Just relax a little bit. I'm so glad I, I shared so much dog. information. And I'm so specific to get when you know. I, I hung out with I hung out with my friends and my dog. My dog. All yeah. right. I made it. I made tacos a lot. You love that. A chorizo. lot. Why'd you make so I made tacos? tacos for lunch every single day. You You're in that. Ryan loves that sort chorizo Joe's from Trader Joe's. That was pretty good when you Trader made it. Jose's. Then I ran out, so I just. Uh, Use tempeh instead. It's pretty good. Taco King. Traditional uh, Christmas feast tacos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty Taco good. King Boone. Not bad. Not bad. So what are you doing for <laughs> New Year's, Shelts? <laughs> what am I doing for New Year's? The same yeah. thing you two are doing for New Year's. Which well, is? We are going to party in Salem, New Hampshire. But let's talk about the new year in general. Yeah. You want to talk about the new year in general? 2015, it's a new year. How do you feel about start, can, starting fresh? You know, it can be a blank slate for you, you know? It's true. You what did you goals? say earlier today about 2015? I don't remember. You said you were going to own it. It's your, you're oh, going to kill yeah. it. It's you're your gonna, year. You're going to own 2015. This is my you're year. Own it. Brian year Schultz, Schultz, I'm going to own 2015. You it's heard it here year. first. We'll it's see. your year, man. You got this. So what are what are your plans? What are your hopes and ambitions? How, yeah, how is it your year? You're going to have a plan. I have a bigger bed. What are your goals? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a goal. Bigger bed. Yeah. A bigger bed. What else? Get rid of the, hmm. the, Eat a little the couch healthier? From, from the, that you have. Eat yep. healthier? What? Eat healthier? Yeah. Like what? I don't know. Try and keep up my uh, daily fruit routine. That's funny because remember when I started bringing in fruit a lot and then you started bringing in fruit a lot? <laughs> we got Ryan starts drinking tea, Schultz starts drinking tea. No, Ryan's no, 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 eating no. fruit, Schultz is eating fruit. I didn't know fruit. about the tea. I went vegan, Schultz went vegan. Yep. No, I went vegan and then you came back. I started wearing black vegan. pants all the time and you wear black pants all the time. <laughs> I was already wearing black pants. Black I just socks. Decided, you always you have did, black You socks. used to have a bunch of different kinds of jeans yeah. now you only wear black jeans. Well, I realized I looked best in them. <laughs> and I wore the, the black socks were on because you would harass me about it on a daily basis <laughs> that's, that's well until, I, until I conformed. Yes. Do you, are you wearing just normal black socks? Regular black socks? Yes. All right. Why good. do you want to be me? I definitely don't want to be you. You kind of want to be him. I want to be the opposite of whatever you is. So put on yeah. white pants. Yeah, put on white pants. You should, I guess. You, are, you have been wearing these shoes a lot, which as much as they're different, I think these shoes most resemble Ryan's out no, of any pair of shoes you have. I think I look have. good in them. And Hasn't he a all of a lift. sudden been only yeah, wearing these? That's true. Because they raise raised my height. He wears them because they have cold out. shoes. No, it's just that these those, ones are, those keep you warm. Those keep you warm. My point is, I They're can't really wear these. shoes. Listen, fuckface. I can't really <laughs> wear these with shorts because they don't make sense or like look that good, I think. It's been cool for like months, and you've just started wearing those like the past couple weeks. I realize like I could benefit from the little nah, you half an inch height lift I get from them. Can you just admit that you're kind of trying to look exactly like Ryan? Fuck no. Fuck no. Fuck no. Yeah. yeah Black jeans, me. dress shoes. I bought these like three years ago. Yeah, which is weird that you haven't really worn them up until yeah. now. I do. I have. Why do you think you need the extra height height boost? That Girls? does not provide any mu- heel. That's like, less than an inch worth of heel. It's something, Any though. sneaker provides more than that. I don't know. I feel like I don't know about that. You think that brings you just up to 5'8"? Because the, the sole's pretty thick, too. It might, yeah. You just start wearing platform shoes. Maybe. Here Bring it, it back. I'll consider it. Those those do not have a big heel. Ryan's heel is bigger than that. Yeah, Invest true. in some of those. Then you can Would you, yeah. fit the part, fit the mold. No, no, stop. Would you rather wear platform shoes and have your legs broken and have reconstructive <laughs> surgery? I know you want to do that. Who's paying for it? Not me. Huh. Why? You you said you've looked into the, the leg reconstructive surgery. I was just curious if that was the thing that actually like happens. Height lengthening. <laughs> Tell us sure about what it is. It is. Leg length. Where do they do it around here? I think they... Where do they do it around here? I, I don't well, know Well, they that. smash your legs and then they put rods in I think you need to go like, a, like LA or somewhere. So you go to LA and then what? They, they smash, smash your legs. your legs. 
It's a process. I think they put you under first. And they no, come no, out, no. Oh, yeah, I would they, they blindside you and then just smash your legs with a bat. <laughs> I think it does involve like breaking your bones or something. It definitely does. What they do... Inserting I, like metal beams I, I think or something? I, I stumbled on some like like TLC show or something about it. And it was like they they break your legs and then they put these rods that like gradually like grow. So while your bones are like healing, it's like they're like lengthening like on their own. And they feel, like gradually. fuse together almost maybe? Well, the bone heals, but it's such yeah. like a gradual like separating Process. of the leg that they're healing as they're like stretching out. Yeah. So that's what you want to do. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. You said you it did. It seems kind of crazy and painful. <laughs> that that's that's reserved for people who are like very vertically challenged. Yeah. But you seem to think you're <laughs> you are. Well, I hear it enough from you two. Schultz, you and I are, are almost the same height. There's something about him, though. He just There's looks... You do have a like very compact... Okay. You look Looking. smaller than anyone yeah. I've ever seen. But how? But anyone no. I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> You're the smallest man alive. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just got to be the whole package. Is it because I'm skinny? You just, Somehow that makes me shorter? You're just a very know. little man. You're a very little, little man. little frail man. And you look very frail all the time. Like yeah. The way you're sitting right now makes you look like you don't have access to your body. Like you can't control access to your my body. body. I can't access my. You look own like body. someone should just drape a blanket around you and push you around in a wheelchair. <laughs> I, well, I would take that. That'd be pretty like, nice. I've seen shorter people than you, but you're still the the smallest person I've they, ever seen. They wear it Thanks. better than you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> God, you are so harsh for no reason. <laughs> How 20, so harsh. Let's get back into 2015. Yeah. What's the plan? What's the plan? This what is are you your change? year? You just said I'm this not is my change. Anything else? You just said it's your year. Your year. You're gonna kill it. You're just gonna eat more fruit. So you're gonna get a bigger bed and eat more apples, and that's it. Sure. That's how you kill the year. Oh, damn, you that's, those are hefty goals. Hopefully, you can keep up with that. I don't feel quite at length to plan it out quite yet. It's what about of, 2015 with the ladies? What about it? Can we recap 2014? What do we recount it? Recap it. Recap it. This is going to be the end. You're starting fresh. Actually, we kind of did that. So, like, if you were pick one, a few words or a sentence that you would describe your your experience with women in 2014. Huge awkward disaster. <laughs> All right, it sounds about right. You were honest. That's honest. I mean, 2014 was so bad. 2015 can only be better. Yeah. But I, I think I, I don't know. You would think. But here's the thing: if you're not going to plan, if you're not going to have a set plan of action to change then things. nothing's going it's to it's just going to be a, this you're going to continue this downward it's gonna spiral it's going to be insanity yeah it's, it's going to be, be worse the same thing and expecting the different results yeah it's exactly gonna be worse. so you could have a plan i'll i'll figure out a course of action when the first date's set if there is one you know that you think you could go a whole year without a first date i think i could i think you should no, let things that, reset. Yeah. Let some people move into the area. Let the other ones move out and and, and whatever. Have a transfusion. Yeah. yeah, hibernate for a while. You know, I've been hibernating. You've gone Think through everybody. Yourself. Let some new people, new blood come in. Sure. What's your plan for 2015, Ryan? What's going to change? I don't know. More of the same. Yeah, probably. What about you, Tyler? I don't know. Anything you want to get into? Parasailing. No, probably not parasailing. I don't think we live in the right area for that. You can figure it out. But I don't know. Probably losing some weight would be a good good plan. All right. That'd be right. nice. Other than that, I don't know. Save money better. Pursue good things. All yeah, right. Yeah, pursue good things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good to hear. I support you in those things. How much fruit are you going to eat? Keep it daily. If I can get one, one piece of fruit in a day, I'd be You know, happy. fruit isn't that great for you, right? I feel like it's still kind of essential. It's not bad for you. It's not essential. No. It's it's sugary. It is sugary, yeah. You could eat a vegetable instead. I eat a lot of vegetables. Like what? No, you don't. Peppers, onions. Yeah, but you cook them. You boil them and fry yeah. them, and then they're they're dead. <laughs> Sapped of their nutritional value. Yeah. You should, run a, you should try to run a marathon. Again, you ran a 5K and got beat by 90-year-olds and 8-year-olds. Yeah, who did I you did. get beat by? An 8-year-old? Yep. A and slew a of 8-year-olds. And a 90-year-old. I think it was only one 8-year-old. <laughs> yeah, I still finished like in this about 65th out of the 200 people who ran, which considering I'm an amateur who wasn't trained properly for it, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. I might, I might try and take up running again when it gets a little warmer out. Anywhere you want to visit in 2015? 
I don't know. You said you wanted to travel the world. I thought you were an adventurous. You can buy a blender in every country. <laughs> there you go. Why don't you travel the world? I might. I might schedule a vacation. Where are you so going to go? Got, we got some vacation days. Where are you going to gonna go? I don't know. A new country. Where? I'd like to see Iceland. Why Iceland? I don't know. It seems, gonna, it seems really nice and exotic. Who are you going to go with? Is Iceland known for being exotic? I don't know. Is it? Well, you, you, you're telling me. I, just I think did. so. It seems cool, when I think of exotic places, it. my mind doesn't go to Iceland. I don't know. It just seems like a place I might want to visit. So you're going to go to Iceland? Perhaps. With who? Right now, I don't have anybody in my life that would probably want to go with me. Would you want to go? Maybe. All right. So maybe we'll go to Iceland this year. What will we do? I have no idea. <laughs> Typical Icelandic stuff? I don't like going on trips with you, Schultz. I don't Why? know. It was a bad experience. Really? Why? Because you hold to, him to sense. We went to no, see Chain of Strength. I don't, I don't hold you to sense. I drove you around the whole time and you said I owed you I didn't 23 consider cents. that. Hey, I didn't consider that. 23 cents. Just like yesterday when you were like, yeah. oh yeah, I, fr- I did all the driving last year. And then I was Listen, like, oh yeah, Schultz, remember when I bought you a pizza and and uh, garlic knots that. for your birthday? I forgot about it. You, okay. for, you really, you're so quick to forget. <laughs> you, maybe you, I know. Maybe that Isn't should that be a New Year's resolution. Yes. Don't Appre- be so quick to forget. <laughs> appreciate the things your friends do for you. I appreciate them. I drove your ass around. To yeah, Bamboo. the 23 cents was just like an observation. Like, So obviously <laughs> forget <laughs> about it. No, 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 no. You said yeah, I owed you. And I said <laughs> I'm no, not No, I did you. not say you yeah, owed you me. you did. I said I ain't paying you. I said, yeah, that's a given. I was just pointing it out. Like, that's no, what the difference no, no. was, so don't worry about what, it. He's doing <laughs> the same thing he did with the blender. Like, oh, of I'm course he is. Just changing his story. No, that wasn't like a joke. It was like me figuring out the math and saying, well, that's... That's kind of like... It's an incremental amount, like, so don't worry about it. So how, how much would justify asking him to pay you? A couple bucks, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what if I owed you $2? Would you probably say forget about it. Three. Forget about it. Five bucks. I don't know. <laughs> It would really eat you alive. It wouldn't eat me alive. I think the twenty three cents is eating you alive. Yeah, no, it wasn't twenty three cents. But here's the it thing: was it was like cents. two cents. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. Then. Yeah, because just the saying, fact that you had it. to do all this this running around and these these things to draw running this conclusion, around. like to to figure this out, is he just a, like he crazy. A scroll, of it it was three, a scroll of expenses. It was a three minute process of calculations, tops. But I feel like you gotta just know, like, if he only if the difference is only a few cents, like. So I take it we're not going to New York in February, huh? Maybe I'll, I'll consider. You're driving can, though. You would drive. Yeah, I'll, I'll drive. It's my turn. I'm not paying you twenty three cents. Didn't we just like split the gas more or less last time? Yeah. So we just do that again. That's all. <laughs> and we would probably do in Iceland what we would do in New York. We're going to split gas. So what's in Iceland, the point of going to driving. Iceland then? I don't know. Why don't you just see, go to New York? Go to cool restaurants and see go see the mountains. Are there cool restaurants in Iceland? What? What? Who told you Iceland is a place you should go? That is way too random for you to just like. You don't know anything about it, so you're not drawing this conclusion on cool. your own. Uh, but according to what? What I've read about it. Are you googling it right now? No. Yes, yes, he is. Yes. Is it because Self Defense Family recorded a record in no. Iceland? I think it honestly is. That's insane. What you I, almost you ta- I've you, heard of Iceland. You take almost one hundred percent of your advice and your opinions from that blog. Their blog. That's why uh, you bought your your yes. your raincoat from Denmark. Yep. That wasn't. You spent their over a hundred dollars on. That was not their tip though. That was a reader's. Okay. Suggestion. Well, you got it from the blog. Yes. Anything that's posted there is what you live by. It's not totally true. It's almost 100% true. Slightly true. true? No. There are helpful things pointed out and said on there. Why do you want to go to Iceland then? I don't know. <laughs> it just looks nice from scenery. I have a cigar roast DVD. We should go to Amsterdam. We should go to Amsterdam. It's really nice and beautiful. Yeah, you can smoke pop Let's go brownies. to Amsterdam. Why do you want to go to Amsterdam? I don't know. It seems fun. In what regards, Straight Edge King? I don't know. There are girls there. There are girls in every country. <laughs> if it's legal, then it's still itch. It's legal there, so you can oh, do yeah. it. So you're yeah. going to smoke weed with me in Amsterdam? Yeah. yeah. All right. It's settled. Let's go to Amsterdam. You're driving. I'm going to drive to Europe, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right. So it's you, they would not let you in any country. <laughs> Why? You got warrants. I remember when I did your background That's check. True. Oh, yeah. The unspoken of charge, right? Yeah. You got a felony against you, son. Four. I'm not going to say you it. You can't even say it. It's I too can't dark. Say it. All right, boys. <laughs> so... <laughs> Let's let's let's, uh, let's let's wheel this back in here. Let's wheel it back in. 2015. Are you looking forward to it, Schultz? 
Am I looking forward to 2014? 2015. 2015, you fuck. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? I am. I am. Why? So just them. Clean slate, fresh changes. But you're not going to make any changes other than eating more fruit? I'm not gonna, probably not going to make many major life changes, no. All right. That's fine. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to? No. No? Well, all right. Well. New records, new bands. There you go. The same old shit. New same old shit. It's your year, but nothing's changing. You're excited Still going to compulsively same behave the same way you Still always have. Still the same have. shit. I can't control it. It's true. You can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. I have full control They're your crutches. Actions. There's no crutches. Shows are your crutches. I'm crutch free. All right. 2015. This past year marked the 20th year that Bridge Nine has been a label. So moving into 2015, we have completed 20 years of Bridge Nine records. Sure which, have. Is, which is quite the feat, honestly. Pretty good. Yeah. For punk and hardcore, these things are very of the moment and things move very fast. So it's awesome. And congratulations to Chris. I mean, he's still here every single day. And yeah. this is his baby. He started when he's just in college, I think. Yep, right? Yep. So, and he's still here every day, still involved, and uh, still excited about it. So, congrats to Chris and, and everything he's done. And Here's the 20 more? Here's the 20 here's more. Here's the 20 yeah. more. Here's the 20 more. I feel like I'm at a wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is an anniversary. 20 coast, years is a, uh, that's, that's nothing to, to shake a stick, stick at. at. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. So, it's exciting. It's cool. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so I mean, there's going to be, I think a lot of our podcasts moving forward, at least for this this next year, will probably involve things that coincide with that in some capacity, you know, we're going to, or at least it'll it'll give us a a little bit of a boost to, to try to do some, some interesting things, but this, for this one, we wanted to kick it off with kind of, I don't know, I guess our, more or less kind of our introduction to Bridge Nine, or, or what Bridge Nine kind of meant to us in the form of like five of our favorite Bridge Nine releases. So, I mean, I think all three of us were fans of the label and, or at least some of the bands, you know, going into this job and still are. So we figured why not, why not pick five records that we really dig and list them off. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's do it. Start with yeah. Brian Schultz. So number five, Half Heart, The Things We Carry. I would have I taken you for a song to scream kind of guy. I love both albums, but something about Things We Carry kind of just... Uh, resonates with you more? It kind of grew on me over time a little more, I think, interestingly. Yeah. yeah. It's just kind of heavy hitting. The, the songs are a little bit more drawn out, which I like. Mm-hmm. Is that your first Half Heart experience, or did you listen yeah, to before I, that? I think so. Was I... I think I like stole what counts on CD from a hot topic. Wow. You stole it. <laughs> wow. But um that might have been I can't remember eh, what counts might have been my first half hour release. I can't remember. Because it was two thousand five, two thousand six. So if it was oh five, obviously it was what counts. True. But things we carry is obviously that huge step up. Yeah. In production and songwriting, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But yeah, true. It was a good album. It is. A great it does, album. It does hold up. A great confluence of different Errors of hardcore all into one. Yeah, I think they kind of, kind of uh, created their own little little they sound definitely. there. Even with that, even that's a more straightforward, yeah, full length. I think, and, and yet it was a pretty instantaneous uh, like realization yeah. of a sound. Yeah, cool band. But um, all right, I'll go. So if we're doing five, let's see. Let me get my other sheet here. Promise is kept by Champion. Good that's another good one. Yep. Yeah. Um. This band was... I didn't get into this band until after they, they kind of broke up, really, as with a few other bands on my list. So, But they are... They're good. Kind of like with, with Have Heart, they... Um, I kind of gravitated towards them a little bit because of Straight Edge. So there's that. And then I don't love like the youth crew sound too much, but Champion does a good it really melodic well. Feel to yeah, it. they have it melodic, but also like I feel like they they're not afraid to get kind of aggressive and yeah. like i don't know it's just really well done for what it is and i think i got into them right when the album came out yeah and it grabs you promises kept is yeah. good it's well well recorded it's tight good rocked, stuff rocked out to it on my ipod yeah. classic on the train there you go very solid hardcore album 
Ryan? Uh, these are in no particular order. Oh. But uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to say The Trouble, Nobody Laughs Anymore. It's a good album. I think it was originally released in 98, and then Bridge and Nine and Painkiller kind of re reissued it in 2005. Painkiller okay. did the vinyl. We did the CD. Uh, yeah, it's a real good album. Singer Gibby ended up moving on and doing Panic. And uh, now he does that record label, Days, which puts out like a lot of like neo folk, like electronic hmm. stuff. Well, there you go. Thanks for the history lesson, Ryan. You're welcome. My number four, uh, Defeater, Letters Home, actually. New Blood. New Blood? Something well, new. The album itself, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just thought it. I just think they're a band that have more or less improved with every release, and this was kind of no exception for me. I think it was just a good, hard hitting album front to back. Granted, it's only two years old, but. Why, why granted? Oh, because it's. I feel like it's probably the newest thing I've picked in here. It's, it's almost it's almost like a relatively fresh album. It's the last thing they released. Yeah. But it's just very, very, very well done. If you like it, you like it. Yeah. Yeah. They do know what they're doing. My next one is actually a Defeater record, Defeater Lost Ground. I know you love it. I do. I think most of the stuff I like on here, I think I've realized I prefer shorter, shorter releases. This is, I know gotcha. this, you probably wouldn't even consider this because it's just like an EP. It's almost well, no, it's a release. release. It's a release. It's, true. it's not an We're album. We're doing releases, but, but um, it's substantial, you know. I feel like it's 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 six songs. The songs aren't super short, but... I don't know. Defeater, I actually went back and listened to this today because this was the spot I was actually mulling over with a bunch of different stuff. And as much as I've kind of grown out of this sound the, in general a little bit. There was some cool stuff going on in that EP. I, I just, Defeater still, even with Letters Home, yeah. they, they do it a little bit differently. They've, they never kind of went in the, let's, let's really dumb things down and get no. super melodic or, or simple or whatever. <laughs> fuck are you doing i don't really know what that was but <laughs> that, that, that like rhythm from all screen yeah but you always do that and you make me want to like jump out the window and like light myself on fire you always yeah, do these just, things I yeah we <laughs> just humming the, the riff i'm in the riff but yeah defeater has never uh sold out isn't is, is kind of silly to say but they Stay have true. They, yeah they have their sound and they stuck to it, and they also found that sound like later in life, I guess, for some of those guys. They're not like super young, so it's not like they were these young kids who were just stoked on like they weren't just copying contemporary bands. They were kind of doing their own thing, and I think that shines through. It's genuine, even if it's not your thing. It's it's genuine. And I think that's obvious. So yeah, feet are lost ground. I'm gonna say carry on a life less plagued. I think that was one of the better records of the 2000s, especially that like of that like sound. They kind of had like the youth crew thing going on, but kind of like Champion. It was still really aggressive mm -hmm. and the, more the, more aggressive than Champion. Yeah, definitely. And I was re real fast, real short. Mm -hmm. Thing that I like about hardcore. Yeah, I thought I thought the recording of that was like pretty perfect for what. No, definitely. What people talk. People too. do talk about that with that record. Just like. Fits, no, it fits just it. hits you. Yeah. It is. Good balance. So we're up to number three here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Verse, Bitter Clarity on Common Grace. All right. Another relatively new one, but I think I just appreciate when a band gets weirder and it's kind of what happened on this album. Came back from the hiatus and put out what I, what I think at least is their, is their best record because it takes a lot of chances. I think pretty much all of them work. It's still like super aggressive political pissed off yeah still cool. has that like epic like later era verse feel too though it does yeah. verse always did have i think just um vocals in general have always had that very yeah. unique presentation so yeah. see like that of, album was like a natural progression yeah, from, it, yeah it made sense especially you take time off and like you mature your sound and you, you just get better as like a musician you want to try different things you yeah know? it's it's understandable. Well, some bands like will come back from the hiatus and like kind of do like a throwback album. Yeah, and that's not at all what they did. No, just kind of picked up where they left off and 
and did their own thing. And yeah, thought I was, remember when they first posted like a new song and it had like a guitar solo in it or something, and yep. everyone was losing their <laughs> yeah. mind because the verse had a guitar solo on one of their songs. <laughs> Crazy people are nuts. <laughs> That's yeah, it? aggression would probably be a top five or, or so, but because I love that when that came out, but I think this just even stepped it up. All right, well, my next one, I guess my number three, is a uh, ceremony, Roner Park. Um, I think this is ceremony. I've I've like almost every ceremony record, and I really like that band. I think most of their stuff holds up, even the the fast stuff, because I mean it's fast and straightforward. I think there's always a place for that stuff if you're in that kind of a mood. And their newer stuff, I think they've kind of been able to successfully brand themselves as kind of like a a punk band more more than a hardcore band. Yeah, and I like that stuff too. They're good songwriters and it's catchy. But I think Roner Park kind of splits the difference like perfectly. Yeah, I agree. And and as much as there's always been uh, it's always been straightforward hardcore bands who have kind of been playing that that more original sound like i feel like i don't know ceremony kind of started doing it before it became i guess a trend i guess you know you i feel like right now there are a lot of throwback sounding bands who are going for that more old school feel and yeah. they also made it weird too yeah they did uh, i'm gonna say it's a reissue but i'm gonna say agnostic front victim in pain classic album cool that we got to reissue that yeah. and can continue to press it and all that yeah wasn't it? It had been out of press for a little while before we. Yeah, it's been out of press for a while, and you know it's been bootlegged. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, exactly. It was the first like actual version of official a long time. repress. Yeah. and it, it's bond a relationship with us and Agnostic Front too. Yep. You know, we've cool. did the live at CBGBs, and we've done some pre-release seven inches for their Nuclear Blast LPs, yep. mm -hmm. and we were able to do a little bit more with the. Like the packaging too, weren't we? Like yeah, yeah. the original. So it's like as much as like we kind of were talking, like we're not gonna include reissues on this. Like when you think about everything that was put into it, you know, like we made it our own. Yeah, and and allowed them to do what they weren't able to do originally to, yeah. with it too. So yeah, that's cool. Sure. The packaging is pretty all out. You know, it's new new artwork, which some people are iffy about <laughs> the new artwork, but mm -hmm. you know, it's embossed and the dust sleeve with the original artwork on it i don't know it's pretty it's it's a good reissue and yeah. it's cool that we got Unified to find aesthetic with the uh united blood seven inch yep yep cool so number two crime and stereo is dead i remember uh i got the review assignment for this when it was coming out and carl sent me in advance of it and it just blew my mind blew your mind i loved it your mind was blown they are long island brothers as well correct yeah. long island yep. brothers long island brethren hometown heroes yeah, it was just awesome that, like, a band who had, like, a pretty, like, defined, like, not by the books, but, like, very well done melodic hardcore sound could, like, take that and just, like, fuck with it so hard and, and make it sound, like, great and kind of weird. And That's the first one that sounded kind of, like, brand new, right? Yeah. Or, like, the newer brand new sounding stuff? Yeah. More yeah. or less. I remember hearing that. I, I never listened to Crime and Stereo too much, but I remember mm. hearing that and, like, it was, like, knowing their older stuff and hearing yeah. that, it was a... It was, it was a huge the, change, but it was a risk, which is cool. Yeah, I yeah. think I think it paid off. People seem to to hold that album in high regard now. Yeah, yeah. production also is fantastic. You love it. You like it, don't you? Yeah, you're yeah, a production you expert. <laughs> yeah, clearly. That's it. That's it. To your Long Island brothers. I'm going to go and write a thousand word essay on it right now. I would like that. Yeah, <laughs> by the end of the day. I'll dig up um, some old words I wrote about it. All right, let us know. All right, we'll go back and uh, record some amendments for the podcast. All right, well, my last two, uh, I they're very neck and neck. So you gonna mention both? No, I'll, I'll I'll go I'll go one and then the other after. But um, I guess for my number two, I'll go with "Carry On a Life That's Plagued." Um, this album, almost every time I I hear it it like grows on me like more and more and like i don't know great album yeah like like what what ryan said about kind of like like champion where they they had that they're kind of i feel like it's more they took they took that i guess they're kind of youth crew you know like that's like kinda. the basis for their sound yeah. at least with like the speed and intensity but then they also combined it almost with like like the aggression and attitude of like like New York hardcore almost, you know, and they played it super fast and super short. And it almost has like kind of more like fast hardcore elements in there too. Like there are songs yeah. that are super fast and 
it's just like perfect. And on top of that, like I love when a band like that who plays relatively straightforward, they have that little twist, and then the vocals and the lyrics are definitely what top yeah. that album off. It also kind of set the foundation for like the more melodic, like mid two thousands youth crew stuff that to an extent. On. But at the same time, it's it's like. They kind of stand on their own because they yeah. didn't. Sac- it's melodic and it's catchy, but they didn't sacrifice any yeah. aggression. Like the vocals are so intense and aggressive, and the lyrics are like, the lyrics are like poetic, but they're also blunt and like yeah. honest. And there's like so many just like random fucks he says thrown fuck in there. A whole yeah, lot on like that album. So much, but it's like none of them seem forced or like it seems genuine. And yeah. yeah, it's just a good album with insane energy, and it's the perfect length. It's kind of just honestly a perfect hardcore album so really good can't say enough about that check it out if you haven't hell yeah and it's also a couple pretty notable members of that band todd jones who moved on to do plenty of other things started terror yep played in betrayed yep he currently resides in nails which is uh, i'm sure y'all know that band so he's, yeah. he's done a lot for hardcore and music so Pretty cool. And then um, Nick Jett was the drummer of that band. Yep. And he was another founding member of Terror and still plays in Terror and records plenty of Bridge Nine bands, actually. So, yeah. And, um, yeah. And I, I know other the guys the in that singer, band. Yeah, the singer too. Ryan plays in Youth Code, yep. who's pretty... Uh, it's like an industrial kind of thing, which is yeah, cool. Yeah, it's like... It, Electronic. Nothing I would normally listen to, but it's it's pretty good. I like yeah. it. Yeah, I think he. I think it's just him and like his wife or girlfriend that do yeah, that too. It is. So that's mm-hmm. that concept is pretty cool too. Yeah, because it's still like it's like industrial electronic stuff, but like I think because of their background itself, kind of has that. Well, like, yeah, I think the vocals are all like yells. Yeah. so it's like it's abrasive. Yeah, it is. It's very abrasive. Yeah, cool. All right, let's see. I get a uh, shark attack, blood in the water. Seven you know. inch, I like that seven inch a lot. Fast hardcore, definitely paved the way for some other bridge on bands to come. I think. Yeah. Outbreak and even ceremony, I would say. Yeah, I feel like, and I feel like, like Shark Attack and like Tear It Up and stuff, kind of like created like a New Jersey sound. Their uh, their drummer Rich has been our like sales rep dude for like ever too. Oh uh, yeah. Good dude. There you go. I'm still got their relationship going. Shout out to Rich. Big ups. Number one. So this is a reissue, but it is a Bridge Nine release, so Polar Bear Club, the redder the better. That's your number one, huh? He loves it. That is. I remember when that EP first came out, everybody was losing their minds, and for good reason, because it was... Yeah. I was considering putting a Polar Bear Club record on here, because I do... I really like that, and I really like Sometimes a lot as well, but... Yeah, sometimes could have made it. Chasing Hamburg was kind of close. Yeah, um, but yeah, the redder the better. Where it all started. That is that you is front it. to back. That's just five like basically perfect like melodic punk songs. Yeah, it's very good. Super good dynamic. Release. Yeah, anthemic, catchy. It's cool. Aggressive. You love it. It's got it all. It's got everything Shouts could ever ask for. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's your top That's five. All you got Shouts is top five officially done. All right. Well, Trevor's number one. My number one is going to have to be Half Heart Songs to Scream at the Sun. Um, I feel like, again, kind of like with Carry On, except maybe even more, this record just totally stands on its own. People like Schultz. Me like and to Tyler compare, had long conversations about this record. Schultz likes to compare it to Modern Life is War, which I think is, which is obvious. And I think most people like to think that Modern Life is War is a better band and that they did that sound better. I disagree. I think... Songs Stream of the Sun totally nailed this. The songs are short, they're simple, and but they're super dark. And the lyrics are honestly like next level to me. But there's very nothing good. cheesy about it. I feel like it's still a very emotional album, yeah. It is, but at the same time, it's like it's totally honest. And I think it's because hearing their last stuff, you're like, this is straightforward. You know, it's yeah. kind of like their last shit. I think as much as the things we carry did have its own thing going, on, it's very straightforward. You know, like kind of yeah. You hear it, and it's almost like. It's very. It's got some different stuff going on though, like Old Man Two, and it does. But still, it's it's pretty straightforward, you know. Fair. Like, but um, Song Scream of the Sun, obviously coming. There was no like, there was no. Oh, I can see hints of of Song Scream of the Sun yeah. in the things we carry. It just came out of nowhere, but at the same it's time, kind of it's a totally still different vibe with the it's recording still just, and everything. Yeah, it just worked 
perfectly. And I don't know, I still, every time I put it on, I still love it. It doesn't age at all. It still feels fresh and yeah. good. It's easy to get through. Every I think, And it's also one of those albums where almost, there's no duds. I think every song yeah, no duds. is really good. It's me like nostalgic for being part of like the crazy build up and hype for like new hardcore records. Yeah, that's true. But I never got like really wrapped up in it much anymore. Yeah, because I feel like they were that was maybe was Boston's probably out, everybody's like holy shit. Yeah, oh eight baby. Yeah. yeah, and I think that band influenced a lot of stuff. At least that record did for a while. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um. So, but at the same time, I feel like as as Half Heart was obviously got insanely popular. Like they were. Still one of the biggest Bridge Nine bands, I would say. and um, But at the same time, I feel like their influence has almost been like already lost. You know, people don't cite that band anymore yeah. as like an influence, which is strange for how big they are. But whatever. It's crazy how big they got, too. Because, yeah. you know, they just, they're a band that always kind of just stayed true to themselves and didn't yeah. make I mean, any like weird moves and just kind of did their yeah. own yeah. thing. And it just, yeah, they didn't go on any like, weird tours or like try to do anything kooky. Well, they, just, they did do the Parkway Drive Australia tour. Yeah, but which, that's probably because that was like one of the only things maybe that made sense yeah. or was available. And even the then I remember Pat saying like it made him uncomfortable because they were like playing barricades in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, but either way, like, you know, they weren't like really trying to become the biggest rock no, band definitely. in the world or I, anything. I didn't you know? really notice like the, their popularity till the very end, I think. Cause I remember yeah. like even when they were starting to like really blow up, like within hardcore, it must've been like 2007 or eight. And I remember their guarantee was still like 200 bucks. <laughs> like it was crazy. It seemed like they just genuinely liked playing and yeah. writing music and whatever. And I think, I mean, I, I don't know Pat Flynn personally, but I've seen him in his new bands. I've played with a lot of his new bands, if not all of them at this point. Um, and dude just loves hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. He just like he just still loves starting bands, and yeah. he doesn't like resign himself to any single style. You know, I yeah. mean, he just does what he likes doing, and he's good at it. Props. It's cool. But yeah, so those are my five. Um, again, this is still in no order. But I'm going to do another reissue of something classic. Uh, Antidote. Thou shalt not kill. Oh, yeah. Seven inch. There you go. I think this probably. Definitely a top five hardcore seven inches ever. So it's also cool that we got to do that. Yeah. Another band we continued working with. Mm -hmm. Formed yeah. a relationship and we kind of had a little bit of a hand in that uh, Boston hardcore documentary too. Yep. yep. Which has to do with a lot with them, even though they're a New York band. Yeah. Drew, who actually did not sing on Thou Shall Not Kill, yeah. but joined the band later. He, mm -hmm. yep. he grew up in Boston and stuff and he put that film together. So even though he's a New York dude, he was here. You know, at that time, and yeah, that's cool for sure. Those are top fives, baby. Top fives, that's it. fifteen great records. Yeah, that you should 14. definitely check out. Fourteen, we had the same. Oh, yeah, true, yeah. true. My bad. Yeah, <laughs> true. But uh, yeah, fourteen, fourteen great records that yeah. you should definitely check out if you haven't, because I think a lot of times only the current stuff is what people might be willing to check out or something. But the stuff is cool, and it influenced a lot of. That's the thing. I feel like hardcore. And even maybe Bridge Nine specifically is very insular and has influences itself in a lot of ways. You would know, this, would this be an honorable mention for the three of us? What year one? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, there are fifteen albums. Fifteen honorable mention. Yeah, I think we were going to put together a, uh, a, a Spotify, Spotify playlist. playlist. Oh yeah. I think maybe our first one too, because yeah. we're gonna again with the twenty year anniversary. That's something we we're going to consider doing. So with we'll plenty of uh, yeah, we might have a weekly Spotify playlist for yeah. you. Just. Stuff that might be relevant to that week's episode or stuff we're just listening to. Kind of depends on what we're talking about. Yeah. So we'll try to put all of these together on a playlist and uh, put that out when this, this goes out. So check it out if you haven't. Cool beans. Want to answer some listener questions? Yeah. Let's do some, some listener mail. All right. So we got Finn. Finn writes, why do you guys give Brian so much shit? <laughs> well, let's address this is, that. This is this is the first. Part I can't of the really answer that, so go ahead, guys. I wouldn't necessarily call it shit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it's, I, it's I think tips and life improvement. Well, right? I think we just yes. challenge you. You know, we challenge you. It's like we're your life coaches. I think, the I think you don't uh, think I've improved your life greatly. Uh, Shouts. You think Shouts. he's made your life worse? No. Do you think I, I don't even think you don't think I've improved your life at all? It's tough to say. I definitely have. I think we can be a voice of reason sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. We can be definitely. a voice of reason. I'll say that. But, like, obviously, 
There is a lot of shit here, though. Yeah, but it's not like we're not giving you shit. It's mostly mm. just like you, I, I think Sometimes that's just the dynamic, they, you know. That's, that's how Finn just, interprets this. That's how many people that's interpret just, it. Finn, but they don't know us, you know. You know, Finn Schultz does it's these crazy love. things. Like yeah. Yeah. he does, he does crazy things. Sometimes you, you do. Know? We you just we just gotta. We try to like reel it in, you know. And understand like, why? Get you to understand what? why? I want to know. Okay. You know. And either way, tell, tell it to Finn. This is Finn. This is a, it we're comes just, out of love. Yeah, it's, it's not, it is. It's a loving, friendly, joshing around with pals. You know. Yeah. You're joshing the around without the giving any details of your own. <laughs> what? <laughs> when you know. <laughs> That's fine. That's just I didn't how really we, do anything. That's how we you know? roll. So that's what happened. But uh, bullshit. There you go, Finn. That's that's why we give Brian so much shit. It's just, it's actually encouragement, and we're just challenging him <laughs> to become part of a his, better man. His, his, his life plan. Those are good. Those are good yeah. pseudonyms for it. Sure. So, next part is: uh, Will the Have Hard documentary ever be out? Probably, eventually, at yeah. some point. I mean, we're gonna put it out whenever Pat on DVD hands yeah. us a final finish, cut finish video. It. Yeah, you know, it's it got put on the back burner, and it's gonna get done when it gets done. Yeah, and I guess this is um, a lot of times this is still a pretty grassroots concept, you know. Like bands do things at their own pace, you know, and yeah, if they want to take five years to do something, then a lot of times we'll let them because why not? You know, if it's something worth doing, then it's gonna take time sometimes. For sure. So, but whenever um, we get news about that, yeah, everybody will know definitely. And then the last part here is, when do you think bands will stop trying to sound like No Warning and start playing fast again? Wow. Wow. Look at that. Accusation. He, he's sick of the, he's sick of the, the mid-tempo moshy bands. <laughs> Ask Ryan. He listens to all the fast bands. Yeah, all that stuff definitely exists. Just the more... You really got to seek it out. Yeah, you, gotta, you just got to dig for it. The more, the more popular bands board. just happen to be the yeah. I mean, things, moshier, yeah. you know. Things just come in waves, you know? I think that's just... That, that New York hardcore sound is just very... I think it's always been very popular, you know? That's a, that's a an accessible sound in a lot of ways, but it's definitely very in right now. And there yeah. have bands kind of branching off and doing whatever with that stuff, but there's still... There are fast bands playing, of course. Yeah, there are a lot, just gotta, a lot of fast bands. Yeah. Just gotta, just gotta look around. Yeah. Either way, some of those... Uh, no warning esque bands still still play with some speed, you know. Just gotta find you gotta seek it out and find the right stuff. Yeah. You gotta work for that hardcore. That's true. So, Finn, hope we uh hope we answered some of your questions. <laughs> and then we yeah. got a re recurring uh Rookie Town. Rookie Town. Who I'm are missing, you, Rookie yeah, Town? Who the fuck <laughs> yeah. are you? Next time you write in, uh, we we'd like to know because you seem to know some details about Schultz's life, but he um another couple part question here. We got can you fellers discuss your personal favorite B nine release? Well, that's s- bizarre and strangely relevant because yeah. we just did that. So hopefully, uh, we gave our question. top five. So yeah, there you go. Feel free to put on those rose tinted glasses and wax romantic and all that stuff. Hopefully, we did that for you. Yeah, yeah. I think we definitely went off on some of those things. So we were we were as honest as we could be. Um, and then. Part two is First, first kiss, kiss Stories. Go, Schultz. Uh, her name was Alina. She was the cousin of my friend John Nevins, who I went to Hebrew school with and was best friends with for a few short years. He actually lives in New Hampshire now and is married. But uh, he took me along to his great uncle's funeral, I think, in New Jersey. Wow, that sounds fun. And some family, you know, extended family flew up for it from Florida. Alina was one of those people. And uh, he got us together, basically. And we had played Truth or Dare in a closet, basically. You what happened? Her in a closet? Is this the girl that touched your cock in the attic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. <isn't> it? <laughs> graphic, but sure. It's not graphic. It was over the pants, wasn't it? Yeah, it was over the pants. Over the pants. Wasn't she, was it, were you driving in the car? She was rubbing your... Yes. Your dongus? Your little dingus? Yes. You love when, that. Everyone saw. Do you not love when girls rub your dingus? <laughs> 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 you say that like it's an uncommon thing. To but that was, at that point, I'm sure you were like, because this was your first dingus rubbing four, experience, like 14, right? Yeah. So you, I bet you were losing your first shit. First dingus though. rubbing experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. First kiss and first dingus rubbing at that's, the same time. That's pretty cool. Double whammy. Yeah. That's great. That's pretty good. Whatever. I, I think that was my first kiss. Whatever happened. I did have a girlfriend her. in uh, preschool, though. <laughs> oh yeah, your girlfriend. Did, I think we did kiss. No, you didn't. That doesn't count. You I don't want to hear you did. that. You would remember if you did. I'm pretty sure we kissed. Pretty sure. All right. No, that, you didn't. If you ask her, she'll say yes. I was his girlfriend. 
Okay. Maria. 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 <laughs> Your first love. The one Maria. that got away <laughs> when you were three. <laughs> yep. Jesus All right. Christ, what about first man. kisses for you guys? <laughs> Trevor first. You can't even say. No, I can, but mine was... Was ours at the same time, or was that... Whoa, this is weird. If yours is during Malibu's Most Wanted... <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, we were... We on a double date? Well, oh. just to set the scene, Ryan and I have actually known one another since since we were like six years old in first grade. We've known each other for most of our lives. We've gone to school together and, uh, most and whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> we were like pretty close back then, yeah. obviously. So I think this was seventh grade. And it was. We were actually kind of there was this this girl that came to like one of our school dances that I ended up like getting her number and like we set up a date and then I was kind of like back then you always went with a friend so I think she How old were you? you were she brought a friend but it was me you and this other kid Bill <laughs> was oh yeah he was there but yeah. he didn't have any he didn't have like a date like I didn't have a date so either it was a double date plus, no you did no 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 this is how it went down. Is mm-hmm. I just went with you, and you she guys. showed up, and you guys kind of just like yeah. She, what happens is her friend went to the bathroom, okay. and then the girl you were seeing whispered in her ear and said, "Hey, she wants to make out with you." Nice. And I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> How old were you guys? I was twelve, so I think you were probably thirteen. Yeah, okay. Thirteen. Yeah, seventh grade. <laughs> in the movies, Malibu's Most Wanted was playing on the big screen. That's great. Yep. Classic movie. Holds up very oh, yeah. well. <laughs> Cinematic masterpiece. And uh, yeah, and I think it was like literally the both both at the same time. And I remember I I like opened my eyes at one point and I saw Ryan just <laughs> staring at me yeah. while he was making out with the girl too. I definitely my first kiss was definitely with my eyes <laughs> yes. open. Oh. I do remember that. I was very frightened oh, and quickly God. closed my eyes again. <laughs> so yeah, that was a. Uh, that was it. That was crazy. That was that was a crazy thing that happened. To it me. was that very was, unexpected. I loved it. Yeah, that's true. You're just totally random. Totally random. First case. And he's lived that that life of uh, wild escapades it's, ever it's since. Set, the, set a precedent. You can never you can never even predict when things are going to happen. Yeah. No, apparently not. It's true. And then the last part of Rookie Town's question is uh, worst slash most uncomfortable time getting caught while jerking at stories. I've been very good about it and never gotten caught. Never got caught jerking off. Nope. You jerk off a lot. Wow, that's personal. <laughs> you talk about it. You would, Come on, you like it. man. It's one of your things, you know? It's, it's not a thing for me. I think pretty sure everybody in the world does it, period. Yeah, I know. Regardless. You do it a lot. This is about getting caught while doing it, which I have not. No, no close encounters? No. If I heard a car pulling up in the driveway, put the shit away. Zip up. That's it. You ever almost get caught with the blow-up doll? Did anybody come no. home while you were getting intimate with the blow-up doll? No, never. Wow. So you good. never got caught? I honestly never got caught. Wow. I've never been like straight up caught. Like someone walked in and like like things are going on else. and like, oh my god, <laughs> what is happening? Like that's never happened. It's uh, been kind of like someone has like opened the door and I've quickly like adjusted and like yeah. covered up for it or whatever, you know? Like something along those lines. But I've never I've never actually been like okay, like Ryan. I've never been caught. Good job. Remember my friend Matt? Um he was now a wrestler. Nope. Um, my friend Matt uh, from Johnson and Wales, the one year I went, he uh, he caught his roommate jerking it um, that year. It was it was a pretty funny story. He said he he walked in, wasn't looking, kind of just like walked by his friend sitting at his computer, like like tapped him on the shoulder, "What's up, man?" Like went to the other end of the room, and then like heard the audio and like slowly turned around. <laughs> his friend's just like. <laughs> Adjusting himself, trying to turn off the porn on the computer. Oh, geez. That's a Did he have like story. headphones on or something? What no, took him so long to so. like realize? The audio was probably low or something. I don't know. Or maybe he was watching it on mute. Pretty funny story though. So Wait, just, why does yeah. him watching it on mute make him not realize that someone else is in the room? No, no, no. no, no, no. Like, he, he like just walked into the bedroom, like opened the door, walked in the bedroom, like smacked his friend on the shoulder, like, what's up, man? Oh. Like, Got to the other end and like slowly. Oh, your and... friend is the one that slowly turned around. No, 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 no. My friend was the one walking into the room catching. Yeah. His roommate. Yeah. Okay. The roommate just didn't. He was getting so into the porn, he didn't notice him coming into the room. Well, oh. I think it was like a very quick thing. Real quick. Hey, Amen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you made it sound like it wasn't as quick as as it actually is. But yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. Those are our questions. Thank you, Finn and Rookie Town. Keep those questions coming. This stuff is. Fun and exciting and rookie town. Let us know who, who, who the, the fuck hell, are yeah, you? Who are town? you? 
that's uh that's episode 10 for the most part next week um it's kind of not really going to be us it's going to be an interview with agnostic front those guys stopped by two weeks ago at this point i think um and yeah they were able to sit down with us before they played in boston and um you hear a lot of interesting stories yeah it's kind of (laughs) very entertaining interview is is a loose because chris (laughs) kind of like starts kind of starts it off and then they kind of just take take the reins and they just talk you know and it goes from one thing to another and like i mean it's awesome you get to hear one of the original new york hardcore bands talk about their experiences with things and i don't know just getting that perspective on on stuff is cool so yeah it's it's cool it's funny and it's interesting and they're definitely very uh very interesting characters yes Definitely. Anyway, I write this song, a song. Let's say I get a guitar. I my my kitchen. I wake up, have a cup of coffee. I write a song, right? I put it on the thing, right? I put it, I record it. Put it on the thing. And then, like, I forget about it. Like, I go back to it. Like, forget uh, about six it. Six months later, it. right? Six eight months later, Maron. You forget how good it is sometimes. Forget about it. Forget about it. You just gotta forget <laughs> about it. That's what they tell me when I present yeah. the songs. Hey, what do you think it is? Forget about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, they should have listened to me all along. Yeah, all That's along. That's right. That's why this album's going to come out great. Better than a lot of our other records because finally are it's back to, to Vinny him. Stigma's theory <laughs> of hardcore. St- in, into Vinny Stigma's Make sure to check that out. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for continuing to listen. Check us out on iTunes. Throw us some stars. Throw us some reviews. We'd uh, very much appreciate that. And... Yeah, keep on listening. Happy New Year. Yeah, have a happy New Year. I think this one will probably come out on New Year's probably, Day. Yeah, New no, Year's no, Day. Or, no, the second. New Year's Day the or second. maybe the second. Whatever. Whatever, still. Happy we'll New Year. It out. Happy New Year. Keep it real. Peace. Peace.